Hello Aries, what's coming in for you? What do we need to know for Aries? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cross Watchers, we're gonna look at your love life, we're gonna look at your career, we're gonna look at channel messages and your kind of, what's going on with your purpose on the planet at the moment, okay? Where are you at? What are the big messages coming in for you? We're gonna take two overall energy cards first of all. I think that Aries in 2024, and probably because you had the eclipse in your sign, I think, yeah, you did, and Mercury went retrograde in your sign in April. I think you've been undergoing a lot of change in the first six months of the year. Some of it, well, all of it actually quite positive, but some of it quite blunt and quite tricky. The two overall energy cards I've got for you are the Queen of Swords, whose knife is sharp, but she can be blunt, and the Knight of Swords, whose knife is sharp, but he's definitely blunt. So, communication, right? Sword cards, Mercury. There's a feeling here of you, and you're very good at this as well, needing to express your boundaries to people. Maybe people at work, maybe people in your relationships, in your love life, in your friendships, but also to people you don't really know that well. Your bosses, the people, if you're on the phone to the bank, all of these things, it's about you taking quite a hard line about where you are, what you want, what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. As an Aries, this is always quite close to the surface with you. You don't normally pussyfoot around these sorts of things. The difference is the stakes are higher for some reason. Many Aries are undergoing kind of life transformational things. Um, what you do with your career, changing jobs, moving house, leaving relationships, starting relationships itchy nose. Five of Swords just flew out. This is not a very typical Aries card. Here we've got someone who didn't really take, didn't really take part in the battle, but went and collected the swords at the end. It's Venus in Aquarius. It's a feeling of playing a game of chess with somebody. Some of you are in a situation, whether this is family or work, or even relationships, where other people are manoeuvring around. It's like you're part of a game, but you don't really exactly know what the rules are. I'm not getting that it's like a malicious game. It's just like when you go to a new school or you do, join a new, you know, do a new sport, like a team sport, and you don't know where the lines are, okay? In some cases, make no mistake, these are battle lines but it's a fair fight you know you can have battle like battle lines and you can have a fair fight and as an aries you're up for a fair fight because that's just life isn't it you're not being sneaky neither of you is putting one over on the other one but you need to be able to hold your own in this and for some reason you might find that a bit awkward or you may feel a bit guilty or you're worried how it will affect the other person. Let's have a look at life purpose. Oh my gosh. Okay. I bet that's not to do with life purpose, but hey. For your life purpose, I'm getting the lovers. Chica -chica. The lovers is a choice. It's major arcana though. And it does represent taking this path or this path. You know, your life goes along for so long on a straight road. If you can imagine a big, long, one of those long American stretches of road or Australian stretches of, we don't really have them here in the UK. We're all a bit tiny and everywhere's a bit of a wiggle. But you know, when you just see it and the road is long and straight. But then you do reach a town or whatever it is. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this metaphor for. What I'm trying to say is your life goes along like this and then suddenly you realise it needs to veer off in either this way or that way and you need to make a choice. That's what the lovers is telling you. You need to make a choice. The universe is saying, almost like a waitress, what do you want? 
here's the menu, what would you like? And you've got that thing where your mind goes blank and you think, I don't know, what would I like? You speak to the other person, what do you think I'd like? Um, Aries normally knows what they want, but sometimes under moments of stress, or what I think has been happening to you is not one big stress, but um, a collection of cumulative stresses that have just made it so you feel a bit surrounded and you feel a bit overwhelmed, okay? The lover's card comes up with the six of cups, which is a very interesting card. Six of cups is the hometown card, the childhood sweetheart card, something to do with childhood. It's also got a sense of bringing something back or resurrecting something because it feels like it wasn't quite dealt with at the time. This could be an old friendship, an old relationship. Doesn't necessarily mean that you wanna get back together or be friends again with that person, but something about what happened is resurfacing in some way. And this can just be that the same issue resurfaces with another person and you're like, God, why do I always keep you know, being friends with people who are a, I don't know, kleptomaniacs or whatever it is, or why am I always getting into relationships with narcissists, you know, whatever it is. And it may not be as serious as that, it might be something much less serious, but annoying. You're saying to yourself, what can I do differently this time around, knowing what I know? Because I know a lot more than I did then. Okay, let me show you the cards. There will be an extended reading. In the extended reading, we take the love cards that come up in this reading and we do an extended love reading, which looks at messages from your person, how they feel about you. And we generally dig like mad. We dig the dirt and we dig the diamonds. That will be the first link in the description box if you get to the end and you think, oh, this is really resonating with me. Okay, let's look at career, then I'm going to look at love life. I feel like the lovers and the six of cups affects all areas of your life. This has been the case for a lot of star signs this month. Okay. Nice. We always want to see the king of pentacles in our career spreads, along with the eight. This is perfect. Right. So my Aries friend, my Aries best friend, has recently switched her job and it happened over the last sort of two or three months. I feel like a lot of you are looking for something better, something maybe, I mean, there's a lot of finance here because the King of Pentacles is holding a pentacle and the Eight of Pentacles is about knocking out pentacles, like working and every day knocking out these pentacles, hard work, graft, showing up day after day, okay? When you get the king of pentacles, it's great for looking for a new job, looking to be promoted, looking to be rewarded um, properly, you know, in a, a way that's commensurate with your skill set. Also, I would say looking at these, you may have been learning a skill or taking some extra training and it's going to pay off. The Eight of Pentacles is Sun in Virgo, which is a work card, a slog card, but also that you have the ability to be able to do this, whatever it may be. Nice. Very good time for you to review your finances, even if that's really scary and really boring, which I think it's both of those things but it's very necessary, okay? We often balk at looking at things to do with money because, oh God, I don't know. Why do you think, Aries? Leave me a comment, let me know. It taps into some of our greatest fears and also that it's a bit, you know, when you go to see your accountant, I don't know, there's always a bit of pain involved, isn't there? But a good time to address your finances, any saving plans you may or may not have. If you don't have one, start one, even if it's with like one pound or one dollar. Okay, 
Oof. A couple more of your career cards. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. So for some of you, there may be a bit of a communication or what do they call comms problem at work. We've got the Three of Swords, which is usually with the Three of Swords, there's two people and then there's a third element or a third person, which is making a triangulation. So this can be typical of having a difficult boss. It can be typical of having a system which doesn't really favour you or just something happening where you've not been kept up to date. For example, you find out an email went out and you weren't included in the list or something around that kind of cliqueiness where you're on the outside looking in. We've got the five of wands here, which is a card of crossed wires, miscommunications, a feeling of people not listening to each other or people talking a lot, but they're not actually saying anything. This could be drowning in corporate speak. It could be that somebody won't actually just be plain speaking. Aries, you are a very plain speaking sign. You know, it's all out there. Nothing really is hidden for you. But when you've got that five of swords, you will need to employ your queen of swords. You will need to just fight your own corner and know who you are. I don't see this. This looks a bit historic, actually. I don't, and that's what that might be doing with the Six of Cups. You may be re revisiting an old injustice, but now you've got more experience and more power to change it. Let's have a look at your love life. Let's do it. Okay, we're going to use different decks. Love life for Aries, please. Love life for lovely Aries. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Love life for Aries. Nice. I always think of that as like a Jean-Paul Gaultier perfume advert card. Oh, do you know what? I saw that that card before it came out, as in, I kind of knew you were going to get it, which is, this is gorgeous, by the way. Take four of these all together. Okay. Let's just move me out a minute. Right, love life. Very nice. Love Life, we've got the Knight of Cups as your first card. This is a card of somebody stepping forward, somebody offering something. It can be um, someone asking you out on a date. It can be somebody that you're already in relationship stepping up more. The Knight of Cups has graduated from being the Page of Cups. And as we know, the Page of Cups spent a lot of time running around with an old fish in a cup and wondering why nobody wanted to date him. Do you know what I mean? So the Knight of Cups has gone off and got a bit of style, kind of worked on things a little bit, worked on their delivery, pimped themselves up a bit, you know, in the ride of weight, they've gone off and got themselves a really well-groomed horse and, you know, a plume on their armour and all that stuff. So the Knight of Cups could be Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, but it's somebody coming forward to offer something. Somebody offering you a date, somebody offering you um, exclusivity or just love, actually, because next to it is the cup. We have the Ace of Cups. We love getting the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is a self-love card where all of love begins. It's like refilling your own fountain. It has that gorgeous energy about it. It's also the opportunity for a new beginning in love. So it can be the beginning of a relationship, the beginning of an opportunity within a relationship. It is growth because it's an ace as well, which I really like. And aces have longevity about them. So the ace of cups is 
it's self-love where you have been your own fountain but then it's overflowing enough that it's reaching other people so you may find that your friendships pop you know in a good way and that this knocks on to people just feeling very simpatico towards you people paying you attention people asking you out people wanting to chat you up in the old-fashioned sense and for you with that lover's card right above this you will need to do some choosing here whether this is choosing who to accept or choosing who to get rid of or choosing whether you want to stay or leave in a situation or simply choosing what is best for you in your love life things are on offer and you get to choose and I love that we've got the four of cups over here you may you may have difficulty making a choice Aries often in their love life can have difficulty in making a choice in knowing what to do with quite pure feelings also if you have with the six of cups at the top trust issues from the past these might pop up and you may feel a bit like oh you know I really like this person but I don't know if I can trust them with my heart. We've got the Queen of Pentacles here as well. This might be a situation you've been waiting for for a while. She is what I call the Queen of Velvet Waiting. All in all though, that is very, very nice love cards for you. Let's take a couple of cards for your person. Those of you that have someone specific in mind. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. Wow. I'm getting the words love story here. Don't often get this for Aries. Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. This is tremendous. When you get the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups together, it's that you've reached a real emotional connection with someone or you have the potential to. It's particularly good because you've had the Knight of Cups and the Page of Cups goes to, progresses to be the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Cups progresses to be the King and Queen of Cups. So something is reaching a significant new emotional level. One that is bigger, wiser, healthier and could also just represent a higher level of love, a higher level of emotional connection. Remember, you're going to feel this first in friends and neighbours, even colleagues at work, that people are, in inverted commas, nicer to you than normal. You know, that people seem drawn to you with that ace of cups. And here it causes like a celebration where two people, the king and queen of cups, more than any other king and queen, are very very in tune with each other okay very very in tune with each other so there is no they've ironed out the misunderstandings and even if they still have them the they're on a kind of wavelength together that is a gorgeous card to get when you're looking at your significant other or looking at how to describe your person let's have a love oracle card for you lovely Aries in the extended reading, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to look into the King and Queen of Cups. What is the best way forward? What is the best way to make something of this energy? What is going on on the shadow side? What's preventing you from having this? And getting some messages about and from your person. Ooh. You get the X. That's interesting, especially when you've got the Six of Cups. Passion. Woohoo! Can't wait for my uh, comment section to be populated with angry Aries. I love it. Going, I would never have them back. I know what it's like. I have an Aries boy. An opportunity is about to present itself that leads you to a new whoop person. Okay? Also, for me, it can be taking it to a new level with somebody. Wowzers. If you want to join me for that, I'm going to go and do it now. And the link 
will be in the description box. Leave me a comment. I'll see you on the other side, you lucky thing. Namaste.